Hey there, homesteaders. Today in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a tour of our chicken coops. I have gotten a few requests from people about doing chicken coop tours to show you kind of how we built things. Uh, yesterday, I got another request from this person, and so we are going to do that tour today. But first, let's back up a little bit because we need to feed these chickens. So I went to the feed store yesterday and I got this bag of feed right here. It's non-GMO chick starter and grower feed. And uh, I'll show you the ingredients list right here. It's on this pink label. You can pause to read that if you want to. This feed is by Sunrise Farms here in Virginia. And so I'm very interested to open this up and see what their version of non-GMO chick starter feed looks like. So let's open it up. As probably everyone is aware, if you're looking at the bag on the right side, front, you can start pulling that little string that's there and it just undoes itself. Open that up and that is their starter grower feed. Uh, it is very powdery it looks like, but you can see that there's actual food bits and particles in there, so that's pretty exciting. I'm gonna put this in our chick feeder here, present it to the birds. All right, I can't find my red scooper bucket so we're just going to use this little tupperware dish here that i had laying around i'm not sure how well this is going to go over being real powdery like this i don't know if they'll enjoy this more if it'll be a better feed for them or if this is going to be not enough i don't know we'll see i do like that there are food particles in it this bag cost me 22.99 at my local feed store all right let's give this to the chackens and see what they say Let's see what they do. Excuse me, hello. Deep litter method is coming along. It's breaking down nicely. I have to hang this so they don't get in and scratch through it. Let's see what they do. Hello, zipper. Apparently no one's hungry. They really want to go out. In addition to our chicken feed, we have Kitchen scraps for the chickens. Our first stop is the compost bin. We have these little plastic bins that we get when we buy coffee. Uh, this is Cafe Bustello, and we use uh, these plastic bins as like compost bins or storage containers, whatever. So in this particular bin, we just have some coffee grounds going in there. I like using these because A, you get to repurpose some plastic and not throw it away. And B, you can keep this on your counter, put all of your kitchen scraps in it or your compostable items while you build it up to then take it out to the compost later. Uh, but it keeps a lid on it so the smell doesn't get out and flies don't get in and it just keeps it neat and tidy in the kitchen. Pick up the camera, you know. All right, so here we have our feed. We have our kitchen scraps. We must set them up. Now we don't have a lot of kitchen scraps today. So all of them are going to this chicken coop, which we call chicken coop number one. This is Penelope. She's got the red around her eyes. This is Pepper. She's got the, the super dark red or black around her eyes. So that's how we know Pepper has black around her eyes. Penelope has red around her eyes. Easy way to remember. She's hesitant to come out because she knows what Ranger wants. And she typically does not want to do what he says.
All right, so this is Junior right here. This is a female Americana blue egg layer. So I thought I'd just kind of introduce Junior and let you see those puffy cheeks and her little beard she's got going on. She is black with gold on her. Really beautiful looking. Everyone's freaking out because I'm holding her and they're all thinking it's danger. She does not want to be held right now. Let's let her down. Okay, poop on the hand. That is common if you raise chickens or considering raising chickens, just know there's poop on everything all of the time. I've got it on my shirt. I've got it on my shirt jacket. It's always chicken poop all the time. Just gotta get used to it, I guess. Everyone has been fed. Everyone is semi-passive. And okay, let's start the tour. First on the tour is the broad overview. So this is coop number one. We call it coop one. And over there where we have two doors, that's one coop, but it's divided into two parts. So we call it coop number two right here. And then we call it coop number three right here. This is all wood and lumber that has been reclaimed because we've got more chicken coops and quail coops coming for the spring. Now I'm a firm believer of build as much as you can for free before you start spending money. But I know there are people out there that want to spend the money and just not have to build it. And that's totally fine. I actually have a neighbor. He has, I think 20 or 30 chickens. He might even have more. He had some small coops and wanted to expand. So instead of building a coop from scratch, he went out and bought a brand new shed divided it into two coops plus a food storage area, and it's beautiful. It's a fantastic coop, but he's a really busy guy. Didn't want to do the building himself for that particular coop. So there's those two routes you can go. You can build it yourself out of reclaimed materials, which takes a little bit of ingenuity and creativity, or you can purchase it, which takes the money. Let's go through coop number one. Here we have our main access door for the chickens. We've got a ramp. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty basic. One by six by five and a half feet long. They're all cedar fence pickets from Lowe's. I think they cost about $3 a piece. These are all cut down to fit. Reclaimed plywood. We had some gaps here. So we put in some roofing tar that I had from previous projects uh, just to kind of seal up those cracks. We've got reclaimed asphalt shingles here. Once again, sealed with the roofing sealant there. Uh, all reclaimed wood. The things that I did buy were uh, hardware like hinges, latches and then i bought all of these three by four inch by eight feet tall landscape timbers and you can see those those are the posts for the chicken runs all of these one by fours top and bottom were all reclaimed all the two by fours reclaimed we did buy the chicken wire so the landscape timbers i think go for four or five dollars a piece and so there wasn't too much cost associated with purchasing reclaimed tin for the roof all reclaimed everything else I don't even think I bought a box of screws. I think I just used what I had on hand. Uh, let's go inside. So I've built a giant access door for cleaning uh, to make it easier to clean. We have the deep litter method going on right now. We have Lacey, she's waiting for the nesting box and it looks like we've got shadowing. Yeah, I think that's shadowing in there and she's working on laying an egg. Uh, we do have a lot of nesting boxes. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten nesting boxes. And the general rule, accepted rule, I guess you could say, for nesting boxes is one nesting box per three hens. The reason being is hens love to lay their eggs where other hens are laying their eggs. So this is enough nesting boxes to facilitate 30 hens. We don't have 30 hens. Now this coop is four feet wide by 10 feet long, and so uh, that's 40 square feet. You could fit 30 hens in here, but with just one rooster, he would be kind of outnumbered. It's typically like one rooster to 10 or 12 hens that is sort of the acceptable, comfortable ratio. So I don't know if we'll ever get 30 hens in here. We might. If we do, we have enough nesting boxes. Why did I create that many nesting boxes when I have so few hens? The reason is I wanted it to have this look of like a slope to one side, a slope on the roof. We will be painting this in the winter when the temperature and the humidity is correct. But for now, this is what we've got. For roosting, we have this roosting pole here, roosting pole right there. Those are gonna get reworked in the spring. For the six chickens that are in this coop, it is totally fine. However, we will need more as we add to it. Now, I did build this on legs. You can see down there, there's the legs, there's the ramp at the front. And the reason I did this is so that during the summer, they can get out of the heat. They do a great job dust bathing down here and they have uh, a lot of cool dirt in the summertime to get underneath their feathers to cool them down. And another thing we have for the summertime is this right here, this kind of loose plank. I've done this in the past where in the summer we'll take these off. There's one here 
and there's one down there in that eave way up there you put hardware cloth instead of the, the wood triangle and that provides them some ventilation so as the heat builds up in here because it will build up uh, that allows the heat to dissipate keeping the ground floor of the coop a lot cooler we are doing the deep litter method that's why there's so much matter in here it keeps them warmer on the cool winter nights so that's why there's so much stuff in here during the summer this will be cleaned out on a weekly basis with just sawdust in here should just move that egg out what are you doing Lacey why'd you move the egg out and then you go somewhere else apparently she didn't like that other nesting box that, that hen laid in so that is coop number one what I have learned with raising chickens is Excellence is ideal, but done is better than perfect. If we waited until we had everything lined out and perfect before we started, I can tell you we wouldn't have chickens right now. Let's talk about door frame construction real quick because I see a lot of people make doors that just don't stand the test of time. I'm not saying these will stand the test of time, but they've done a pretty decent job here. So what I did is I framed my door to where the two by fours are at a more, what I feel like are a more structural, stable position which is building them this way rather than, rather than the other way, right? Does that make sense? I don't know. So I built the rectangular frame using two screws in each joint from the other side. Obviously drill your pilot holes, then run your screws in. That way you don't risk splitting the wood. The next thing I did was put this cross member from one corner to the opposite corner. And I made sure that part of that cross member went into this two by four and the other part of the cross member went into this two by four. So therefore, when you screw them in to both corners, you avoid the twisting and the door becoming wonky as you go along. The third thing I did after that is I put the chicken wire on there and I stapled it in with half inch staples. And those staples seem to be holding it up. I'm not sure that the chicken wire does any real structural support for it, but it does a decent job at keeping the chickens in. The third and final thing that I did in the construction of the door is I put these one by sixes up here and I just simply screwed them right into the support member with two screws each. If you only put one screw in, the board still has the ability to do this sort of thing. But if you put two screws, you structurally stabilize the frame from twisting or bending. To hang the door was fairly simple. I stuck a one by six underneath, set the door on top of it, mounted my hinges on the outside there, and then the door swings true. That's probably too too long of a, an explanation there but that's what it is this is a door that we did this the exact same way and it's a great door and it, it's structurally sound not perfect uh, the reason being is the wood that we used was mega warped so you can see the warp that comes out here luckily it holds the chickens in but that warp it's flush up here where we built it and i really tried to uh to get the wood straight before we screwed everything together and it just was not having it so uh, it is a warped door but it does the trick here's a third door that i built uh, this is a temporary door, very, very temporary because uh, we're not planning on keeping all of these chickens in this living situation for very long. The Americanas are going to get their own coop separately and then the Jersey Giants will get this entire coop to themselves. We'll take out the divider and it'll be good. To build this divider, all I did was use a four foot green fence post, hammered them in the ground uh, by a foot so they're three feet tall. And then I put two by fours on one side and you can see I screwed the green post to the two by fours. So these two by fours here are not in the ground. They're not buried. You can see they wobble, they go back and forth, but I use this real lightweight green mesh netting in order to uh, keep the chickens away from each other. Also tried a different tactic with the support members on this door where I did two of them to kind of give it a different look, experimenting with that. And so far it's held up. This uh, awning or this, this cloth covering was given to us I'm actually not really sure where we got it. Someone handed it to us at some point, and so we just use this as a little sunshade for the chickens. This is by far the messiest coop or half coop we've got here. We have the standard ramp. Uh, it's got a giant door, a larger than normal door because we're dealing with larger than normal chickens. Jersey Giants are the largest chicken breed, um, even surpassing the Brahma by weight. And so uh, they needed a big door. We've got one nesting box because we've only got two hens for the Jersey Giants. It is a small place here, but it's four feet wide and about two and a half to three feet in. We'll call it 10 square feet. That gives three and a third square feet per bird, which is decent for the Jersey Giants. For the nesting box, a temporary solution, we're using a bucket right there. You can see how I cut that bucket. I left the bottom section to hold 
the nesting materials in, and it works just fine for these birds. It keeps the poop from going in the nesting box whenever they're roosting on the roosting bar. You'll notice that all of our roosting poles are supported by other 2x4s. We never screw roosting bars in to just plywood because they will definitely uh, come undone as the chickens hop on top. Chickens weigh anywhere from, from six pounds for small chickens all the way up to uh, 12 pounds for large roosters. And that Jersey Giant Ranger will get up to 15 pounds by the time he's done growing. He is still young, he's about nine months old right now. So he's still got a lot of growing to do. Uh, I would say right now he's probably right at about 11 or 12 pounds. Now, the question that I had been getting is how did we divide this coop into two parts? And you can see that board right there. I just grabbed a reclaimed scrap board. Uh, I measured out the inside clearances and cut the board to match those clearances. You, could, you can even see how this is reclaimed. It's got random cut marks here and there, but the chickens are not able to get through those spots, and so we don't have to worry about them crossing over. There's a little bit of gap at the ceiling, but it's too small for them to get over there as well. So that's how the divide is done. Now onto the other side of this. Oh, hello. Hello, Pepper. I'm sorry. Whoa. Okay. Well, why do I keep doing this? It's like every time I come out here to film anything, she's in the nesting box. Let's go on the Americana side and see what we've got over there. So because we had the divider set up, uh, we have to come into the Americana run in order to access the Jersey Giants laying nesting box. So when I open this, we'll see the Jersey Giants nesting box right there. Oh look, we have two Americana eggs right there. Nice, so cute. All right, so Pepper has not laid her egg yet. We will close this back up. For our latches for these kind of doors, I haven't been using any sort of like high-tech equipment. What I am doing for the doors that have an overhang like this, I just take a section of that size wood. You can see it, you can see it right here. Uh, and I screw that to the frame of the building. And then I take a screw that has a blank shank on it. So I believe it'd have to be a two and a half inch screw or longer. And then I run that through just a piece of wood. And so what that does is the threads on the screw go into the support wood while the blank part of the shank stays in this, which allows this to turn without turning the screw. I hope that makes sense. That's the best way I know how to describe it. Now, perhaps a raccoon could come and like clamor around and eventually open this, but we haven't had that issue and I think we're safe. Another thing you could do is probably drill a hole and stick a dowel in it uh, so that you would have to pull the dowel out before you could move this. That would be like a safety measure. We haven't experimented with that yet. We might when summertime comes. Same kind of thing right here with the, the latch for the door. Uh, in here, we have the chicken coop for the Americanas. Slightly larger, about four feet by four feet because we have more birds in here. These birds are not quite as big, but there are, are more birds. Once again, we have the roosting pole. It is mounted to two by fours. It's mounted to the frame because we don't want it to rip out of the plywood. That's why we never ever screw roosting poles into the plywood. It will eventually let go. Every door is mounted to a frame post. We have a ramp here for the chickens. This needs non-skid, it needs a shingle or it needs some rails. That's on the project list to do. Once again, this coop is raised up off the ground. I forget what the rise and run requirements or recommendations are to ensure that uh, rain does not stick around or leak, that it runs off efficiently, but this has been doing a very good job. We are planning on adding water reclamation to this so that uh, we don't have to keep trucking water out every single day in order to water our birds. Now for the size of the runs, we just used recommended square footage per bird as found online, you can find it all over the place. For outdoor space, they need about 10 square feet per bird. So two by five feet per bird, including the under coop spot down there, all the way out to where I'm standing here against the back. This is 20 feet this way and six feet this way. So 20 times six would be 120 square feet. This is large enough to house 12 birds. We have five birds in here. So they have plenty of space for their run. Similarly on this side, this is 20 feet long because it's the same distance. Uh, but it is seven feet wide, so seven times 20. This is 140 square feet. You fit 14 standard size birds. I probably wouldn't go over 10 for the larger breeds like the Jersey Giants. Obviously, we would need the coop to match that in order to ensure that they have enough space. And then this chicken run over here for the main coop is a 20 by 20. So 400 square feet would allow us to raise 40 birds in here, which I think is more than we can even fit inside the coop comfortably. And so this has more than enough space to raise a lot more birds. And that's our goal here. We really want to grow this particular flock and let it be the primary flock for our egg production. For the other two flocks, the goal is with the Jersey Giants and the Americanas, raise fertilized eggs in order to sell on eBay. You can buy chicken eggs for hatching on eBay and 
that's one thing that we really want to do to help supplement feed cost and, and help other people get into raising chickens. Guys, this has been a really fun video to make and I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and got value out of it, a like would go a really long way in helping YouTube know that this is a good video to send people that like homesteading content. Also, a great big thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys are helping us feed people and we are so grateful for your support. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next video.